Hi everyone, welcome to another PSDVault.com tutorial. In this video I'll show you how to create some 3D stripes, text strokes and some photo sharpening tricks. So to begin we'll create the background and we'll add a new layer on top of that. Then what we're going to do is pick a colour for one of the stripes. I've decided to make this one dark brown. And we're going to draw a box for the stripe to be in. And then we'll fill that box with the colour. And then what I want to do is create a gradient overlay on top of this colour here. So bring up the blending options, tick the gradient overlay, and we'll put the opacity of this overlay down to uh, just about 15% there. Then we duplicate that layer, just using Control J on the keyboard. Drag the layer down a bit, so we're going to add a stripe just beneath the first box we created. I'm going to pick another colour. May as well make it green. And then we're going to fill that new box with the new colour. Then we're going to keep the gradient overlay on that one. I'm going to modify it slightly. And then we're going to add an inner shadow as well. And bring the opacity down, distance down to zero, and, and make it one pixel in size. Now because we're going to be duplicating these layers a couple of times, I'm going to create a group layer there. And call it stripes, and move those two layers to be within that group. Then I'm going to duplicate the group right click on it and duplicate that and of course name it as something meaningful now what I want to do is drag this new layer over here a bit so just for the sake of resizing I'm just going to put it up here make it really tiny and then drag that back down to where it belongs alright now I'm going to hold control on the keyboard click in there so angles those lines now. Now I'm going to go back down to our original stripes group and duplicate that one more time. And we'll drag that up to meet the angled layer that we just did there. Now in order to create an easy shadow-like effect onto those two angled layers we need to merge them together. So right click on the group and we'll merge them. So now they become one layer. And then we're going to select the contents of that layer there. So it's just got the contents of the layer selected. Then we're going to go up to the layer menu and we're going to create a new adjustment layer with brightness and contrast. And we're going to set those brightness and contrast levels appropriately, put the brightness down to about negative 90 and contrast up to about 45. So as you can see that image portion there has become really dark. Now in order to make that shadow a little bit more believable we're going to add a soft light in front and to the right of the stripes there. So we're going to choose the white color, create a new layer and choose a large really soft brush type. It's going to click once or twice over here and then we're going to change the layer opacity to soft light. So now I'm going to show you how to make your text stand out a little bit without resorting to things like drop shadows and beveling and embossing. Let we'll us bring up the blending options for our text layer and we'll choose the stroke option there. As you can see it's by default stroked it with black and with a uh, size of 3 pixels. So I want to change that down to 1 and we want to choose a color that matches the background a bit. In this case we want to make it blue but we want to make it pretty dark. So it's pretty subtle but as you can see it does make the text stand out.
Now onto the sharpening methods. Now what we want to do is just sharpen this overall image so that will make things like the model's hair and the inside of our jacket there stand out. So we'll go up to the filter menu down to sharpen and smart sharpen. And we'll choose to be in the advanced mode, not the basic mode. So on this sharpen tab here, we want to put the amount up to about 90%. On the shadow tab, we'll put that to 60% and radius of 1 pixel and tonal width of 40%. On the highlight tab, we'll set the fade amount to be about 35% and tonal width 100%. Now it is pretty subtle, but that has sharpened the image. Her hair is standing out, so are her eyelashes, believe it or not, as well as the inside of her jacket. I'll just flick between the two images here, you can see. It might be hard to see on YouTube, but the changes are there. Now, continuing on from the previous step, what we want to do is add in some more contrast, particularly onto the model's shirt. So we'll create a new layer on top of the image there. We're going to choose a pretty dark grey here. And then we're going to grab our paintbrush tool again and size it appropriately. So I'll just do one click in there, and one click down here a little bit, and again on her hips there. Now what we want to do with that layer is change it to overlay. So as you can see, we've added a little bit more contrast there. It's a matter of playing it around until it looks right. Now moving on, what we want to do with this image is again sharpen it, but we want to use the high pass filter. And this will be sharpening things like the gravel on the beach there as well as the grass on the ridge lines. So we'll duplicate the background, go up to filter menu, choose other and choose high pass. We'll change your radius down to about 8.5. Now those light coloured bits of the image there are the bits that it's going to be sharpening a lot. So we're going to change this layer to hard light and we're going to change the opacity of the layer down to about 20%. Now as you can see the sharpening done by this layer is pretty subtle depending on the opacity of the layer that you put there. but it does sharpen things pretty nicely. Well, that's it from me guys. Don't forget to check us out on Facebook and YouTube. Take care and see you next time.